Okay, so we're now recording. Um, thank you everyone for showing up. Um, this is, we didn't have a session last Thursday uh, because of scheduling issues, um, but we wanted to do a repeat of what we did the week before, which is, uh, we have Dr. Shin here again, who's, uh, who's, a, who's a play therapist and teaches in the mental health counseling program along with myself. She teaches a play therapy course, and she also has a lot of expertise working with kids. And she talked uh, last time about some of the concepts of play therapy in general, and some of the concepts of what we call parent-child relationship therapy, which takes the concepts of play therapy and helps parents use those concepts at home with kids. Um, and so they can kind of act as, uh, you know, play, act as um, the therapist, I guess, in a way with their kids, but in a, parent, in a parental role, right? And um, we also talked a little bit about nature-based uh, play therapy. And so I wanted to kind of continue on uh, on that topic today. And it seems like we have a smaller group, which is maybe better. So you have um, some more, more opportunity to ask questions. And, we'll, and if you have questions at any time, you can always either unmute, you can use the chat, uh, we'll be, I'll be monitoring the chat feature, but you can also, if you really feel there's something you wanna ask, you can unmute your mic and ask the question. Um, a few caveats uh, before we actually get started. Um, this is not therapy, um, it's uh, educational. Um, hopefully it'll be very helpful and um, I think, and some of the things Dr. Shin is talking about, um, you can go through really a lot of trainings to get certified in these things. And we're not doing that here. We're just providing some general information, but hopefully information that can be helpful. Um, and the other caveat is that, although I'm getting better at this, the technology is still always something that, that sometimes uh, does things I don't expect. And so hopefully um, we won't have any hiccups with technology. Um, uh, but you know, that's always a, an issue. Um, and these sessions will be posted on the website for Center for Student Engagement. And if I see, uh, I don't see either Nicole or um, the, other, the other person, uh, but, but I, I'll, I can talk about the website where that's gonna go at the end. And so there's a few people joining, still joining, and I'll just continue to admit people. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and get started. So, um, so Dr. Sang Min, Dr. Shin, uh, we were talking, uh, I was talking a, a second ago in the introduction about um, the three things we talked about two weeks ago, which was some of the basic concepts of play therapy, right? And some of the, also the basic concepts of the parent-child relationship therapy and how concepts from those um, types of interventions can be helpful how some of, some of the basic concepts can be helpful, even if someone is not trained fully in those types of interventions. And since I think we have um, some new people here, a lot of new people, but even if they're, they were at the last session, I think it would be helpful to kind of review some of those basic concepts and what you think are the, the easiest things a parent could implement in the short term that could be have an immediate, uh, uh, immediate impact without having to go through a, a long kind of training thing. So uh, just to review what we talked about last week, I mean, last time was that play therapy is a child counseling approach that counselors use because developmentally the children, they are not like, they, they, they cannot express their thoughts, feeling, verbally effectively. So uh, counselors use toys and play with the children to help them to improve uh, their um, uh, mental health. So that's what the play therapy is. You know, other, you, we use talk, you know, when you are stressed and you sad, you go to someone, you your trusted friends or counselors, go and vent out how you feel, what you think about and what happens bubbly. But children, sometimes they don't know, you know, they don't know what, what the specific words, the feeling words 
uh, they how to express their feelings or what happened. So, but children naturally play what they experience and how they feel and they uh, learn while they're playing. So uh, counselors use play. So child-parent relationship therapy is, um, is one of the, um, uh, is a type of a play therapy, which also called as a filial, filial play therapy is that counselors invite parents to teach basic counsel, uh, play therapy techniques and practice with the counselors and practice with their uh, children so they can gradually transfer those skills to uh, their daily life. So the basic technique we talked about last week is the tracking, which is we pay attention to children. So sometimes, you know, now I'm watching Dr. Krola and then I noticed that he was, he he's listening to me by seeing him nodding his head. So how I express, um, deliver, I am listening you or I'm, I'm paying attention to you is that I am making comments on his behavior. Oh, Paul, I know that you're, listening, you're very focused and listening what I'm saying by your nodding your head. So I'm basically commenting on his behaviors. So that's how we as an adult, as a parent, as a mom, we deliver this message. I'm paying attention to you. I give my attention to you, you know, bubbly commenting their behaviors. That's tracking and reflecting is basic counseling terms, we um, reflecting their feelings. So, oh, I mean, to be honest, I cannot see you guys thus and this, but you know, oh, you look confused. Or, oh, oh you, you look like you understand what I'm talking about, you know? So you um, deliver your um, um, reflecting their feelings. So in that way, we, deliver this message, I understand you. You're scared today. You know, I mean, you look uncomfortable today. So we deliver, I hear you, I understand you, I empathize you by reflecting their feelings. And the third one we talk about was that uh, limit setting. You know, last time one of the parents brought it up, you know, oh, the screen time video game is the problem, you know? And yes, it is a problem now, especially, you know, this quarantine time with you, you, your children cannot go out, you know, everything is shut down. So of course, uh, screen time increased. So how can we set the limits? So first of all, again, reflecting their feeling. I understand you really want to play video games. And second is that communication, the limit. The time is go to bed, nine o'clock. Time is go to bed. So you deliver, you uh, uh, deliver the message. The rule in this house, nine o'clock or the eight o'clock is time for bed. And in, when you set the limit, you don't wanna use the word you. You want to use the, uh, no, you wanted to say the rules, you know, nine o'clock is time for bed. And you have, you need to say very firm voice, voice. So think about yourself. When we say sky is blue or today is Thursday, do you feel you need to force your children? No, <laughs> you know, it's a fact, right? Sky is blue. There's no force or we don't have to make them to believe. No, it's the sky is blue, it's just a fact. Today is Thursday, it's a fact. It's the same thing. Nine o'clock is time for, time for bed. And third one is you always need to provide alternative behavior, target alternative. So I understand you really wanna play games. Mm -hmm. 
Now you, the game was so fun, you want to continue. But nine o'clock, it's time for bed. Tomorrow, when you woke up, you can play a video game. I don't know you, what is your screen time rules, but you know, uh, after dinner or after lunch, you can play video games. So when you set this limit, you need to make sure is this that a limit necessary, really necessary? And you can you keep it consistent? Okay, sometimes like, okay, nine o'clock, time to go bed, but you have friends come over, your grandma is here, uncle is here, and nine o'clock, okay, today is like, okay, it's 10 o'clock, it's okay. Then children got confused. So having very structured limit setting is important. And before making that uh, limit, sit down, really reflect yourself as a parent, is this limit really necessary? And then can I keep it consistent no matter what? So that's the uh, a very basic um, uh, uh, play therapy techniques. But I know this is hard, you know, this is just I, I'm sharing and uh, those are the th something I think you can use, try to use and that, that might be helpful for you. And also we talk about encouragement as well. So in play therapy, especially child-centered play therapy, we wanted to encourage our children's behavior rather than praise their productive a product so for example children got a on their exam or test great job you're great and that evaluation external evaluation my judgment my evaluation as a parent you're a student you're good and that my children might think okay if what if i don't get a Am I not worth it? Am I, am I not a good, good girl? So we wanted to help them to develop their internal evaluation. Oh, I know you worked really hard on that test and you got A, I'm so proud of you. Or you, you, um, I'm so proud of you also like external evaluation. You wanted to say, you are very proud of yourself. You know, you work hard, you, you got A, you are very proud of yourself. You are so happy about your research. You work really hard. So you, we wanted to recognize their achievement, got A, but also we wanted to uh, encourage their effort so they can see their own motivation. So that encouragement helped them to feel, oh, I am valued like for what I did. And I am accepted who I am, rather than what I achieved, you know? So, so uh, yeah. I wanted to ask, so, and so what you're saying is, if the child, whatever they achieve, if their effort was, if they had a strong effort, you want to have the equal amount of praise whether they achieved an A or a B or, or whatever the final achievement was. Right, so we wanted to look at their process. So, you know, of course, you know, if you got A, you are happy, right? The child, the child is happy. So we acknowledge their happiness. They are proud of getting A. They are proud of, of what they achieved. It was what they really wanted to have it. We, uh, encourage that part not not oh you got a so you're good good girl or good students or good boy good daughter mm -hmm. so i'm sorry just to kind of go for a hike um so what you're saying is basically remind them why they got the a correct it's because i'm i'm quite guilty of that myself like you know you you're a honor a great job you know but i just emphasize on those grades and right now, as you're stating that, I'm reflecting on myself and I'm writing down the notes because I really did not 
you know, emphasize their value of the work that they've put in. Exactly, exactly. So, like, uh, I, in my class, I always use this example. So, let me talk about myself. So, when I was an uh, elementary school kid, I grew up in Korea. And in Korea, we have, like, a painting competition painting competition and me and my friends went to the painting competition it was outside and we were painting with the water paint you know water paint and it's outside it was windy like a apostle imagine all the sand covers our campus and it was mad you know I messed up with my paint you know and my friends also drop painted and from my perspective, she messed up. <laughs> she messed up too. But she was so proud. She was so proud of what she made. So she asked me, is this pretty? She, she wanted me to praise her work. So is this pretty? Is this pretty? So I want to be a good friend. So I used my social skill and I praised her work. I said, that was an amazing tree, <laughs> you know, that was so beautiful. And I feel guilty like Crystal, you know, like I feel so guilty. And then I came home and then I talked talk to my mom and the mom so-so asked me to praise her work. I mean, to be honest, we all messed up because of this wind, wind and sand. And my mom said, you know, oh, honey, you don't need to uh, lie about it, but you can, uh, acknowledge her effort and she looked she, it sounds like she is proud of herself so you can talk you can acknowledge that so wow you know I don't have to lie about it you know I just need to uh, acknowledge her feelings so oh so so you look so proud of what you draw you know so that's how we uh, encourage each other you know that's that's the moment I learned I'm like oh Aha, uh -huh. I don't need to uh, praise her A, you know, grace or whatever output. I don't need to worry about that, but I, I still can validate her work, her effort, you know, her time or her feeling, you know. So that's the something you, you, you can uh, uh, use instead of a praise. I want to ask also, um, when children, um, you know, maybe don't achieve what their parents want them to achieve and feel really bad about it. What, yeah. What's the right kind of reaction then? Uh -huh. So many, many times, you know, children, so for example, children lost some big games. And I'm really sad, disappointed, and the battle was like this. And how would you respond to them? <laughs> Usually, how would you respond to them? Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> you know, sometimes they said, I'm stupid. Yes, Art? Uh, I would respond by the time they played a great game. Mm -hmm. As long as you know you played the best game you ever played and you lost, mm -hmm. that would be good enough that you did an awesome job. Just reinforce their, reinforce uh -huh. their uh, I guess, their... Uh, I guess your attitude towards the game, if you know if they lost or not. Uh huh. So it was a great game. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, sometimes we can lose. You can't win all the game. You know, so that's a very typical uh, parents' response. I recommend you before you say that. I recommend you to empathize with the they feel. So oh. You're so disappointed that you lost. Oh, you're sad. It was a big deal. Then you can say, uh, uh, you can say what art uh, uh, said, you know. So first, I recommend you as parents to reflect on their feeling because we wanted to empathize, empathize, empathize with their own feeling. So, uh, we wanted to deliver. I'm here with you and I uh, feel with you. You lost that game and you're really sad and it was a big deal. 
even though that was an awesome game, you know, small game, you worked hard, but your child, your son really feel disappointed and sad at this moment. So just to deflect their feeling at the moment, just one minute or less than one minute is, is enough. I think a lot of people think, a lot of people believe that that they don't wanna do that sometimes because they think it'll make them feel worse if they recognize like, oh, that was, that, that was really important and, and it was a big deal and you feel sad that if they say something like that, the child might feel worse. What, what do you think of that? What's your response to that? I think it's, uh, they feel more, ah, I, I have a someone, you know, someone really understands me, how I feel. You know, we don't need to focus on that like forever, you know, just to, just at the moment here and now, just to focus on, uh, you know, here at uh, there, you know, here and now, just less than uh, one minute, I mean, 30 minutes, you know, I mean, 30 seconds, you know, just reflect on their feeling. And then you can say, you know, you can do better you know, next, time, uh, next time, but like, what we wanted to deliver to them is I'm here with you and I understand you. And I, I personally, I believe that that helps build your relationship. Parent, oh, my mom really understands how I feel. You know, my dad really understands, you know, and then she, he said that to me. So I want to show a little video clip about this, you know. And, uh, what Dr. Kola just said, would it make them feel worse or? Um... Let me, sorry, I, I accidentally muted you, Sangmin, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I need, so I'm going to change, I'm going to change you to the, uh, to, to the host. Yes. Okay, so you should be able to. Now, uh, share your share your screen. Okay, I I'm gonna show you. Uh, can you yes. see yes. my screen? Yes. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna show you a short video clip inside out. Uh, how many of you watch this video? I mean, movie. If you have a little ch child. Uh, this one is uh, she is sadness. So inside out ha, ha, is an animation that has uh, 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 it has uh, uh, several characters feeling characters. So there are joy, which means happiness, and sadness, and jealous, angry, and bing bong, and. In this short video clip, Bing Bong lost his favorite toy and sadness and joy wanted to comfort them. So here we go. So he just lost. You trying to tell me louder? Huh? Louder? I don't know. So joy, happiness, but try to make him feel better. I'm sorry I took your note. I took something I loved. Mm -hmm. So sadness, just to check it, check what happened, you know, check uh, 
what they did. It's sad. Mm -hmm. So I will stop here. So uh, have a joy. Try to make him feel uh, feel better, and he lost his favorite toy. So. What do you see, you know, how sadness made him feel better? Or what do you see, you know, from the sadness? Yeah, I, think, that, I think that, yeah, it's the relating. So mm -hmm. someone understands what I'm feeling and mm -hmm. feeling a little bit of what I'm feeling. And so yeah. that makes me feel not alone. Yeah, not all alone. So basically, she reflect on what happens, and it's sad. So again, he she reflect, and later I don't know if you uh, listened to uh, at the very last uh, line was that uh, Joy asked, "How did you do that?" And sadness that said, "I feel sad. That's why I said it's uh, sad. You're sad." So. If you see some feeling from uh, the child, if you see sadness from your child or anxious or scared, fear, you know, I know it's it's easy to say, oh, it's okay, um, you're safe, you know, it's okay, everything's gonna be okay. But we wanted to show, I'm here with you, you're not alone, what Dr. Polo said. You know, you're not here uh, alone, and I can relate it how you feel. So tomorrow, for example, tomorrow, uh, your child has a big game or piano recital or some big public speaking, and they are nervous. And uh, we usually said, oh, I know you'll be great. You know, I know you'll be great. So that's my expectation, you know, my expectation. And uh, um, sometimes that dismiss their feeling. You know, that can infer infer that it's not okay to feel uh, nervous. You know, you'll be great. Don't feel that way. So we wanted to deliver that it's okay to feel nervous. So, oh, you're nervous. Tomorrow is really, uh, tomorrow is really, um, uh, uh, tomorrow is a really big day and you work hard and you prepared for that. So you you wanted to relate it with your uh, your your child so how can i how can i make you uh, you as a okay mm -hmm. okay but so nicole is joining us now i'm just i added her mm -hmm. um so there was a comment about if you want to just clarify what the what that link was or what the movie was, because there was someone who wasn't able to um, watch the video. Okay, the video comes from the movie Inside Out, and if you of uh, uh, Google, I mean, search uh, Bing Bong, comf I mean, sadness, comfort, Bing Bong, then you can find this short video clip. So the movie was Inside Out. And then I think this is a great movie to watch with your children. You know, it conceptualizes different feelings very well. And it also talk about the short-term mem memory and long-term memory and how that affects their feeling too. So I think that's a very uh, great movie to visualize your feeling. Mm -hmm. um, 
Does anyone have any questions? You can either utilize the chat or you can un unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the question. Give everyone maybe a minute or so. To... Yeah. I just read, uh, uh, Chad, thank you for your your comments. Shu uh, Yuan. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, Maria. Um, how, how can we relate to our kiddos? I have a nine year old, um, and so the last. I'm going to say like maybe two or three weeks or something. Um, I think he's been like a little bit like anxious when we're going to go out. Like, you know, we're not going out, but, you know, even if we're going to go and do like a grocery pickup or, you know, pick up some, you know, dinner or something like that. Um, even if like going to a walk or something, and he's just kind of like afraid to leave the house. So lately he's been telling us that his stomach hurts. Mm -hmm. He runs to the bathroom and he's there for a while and stuff. How can we kind of like reassure him that you know things are okay? Mm -hmm. So he's a nine year old and he uh, he is very anxious about what's going on outside and now wow. he's showing that there's symptoms. So first of all, you know, uh, I would really check his physical physically he's okay. So if everything is okay, confirmed by doctor and as a mom, you evaluated uh, his health like physically, then there's nothing, uh, no, no. everything is okay with physically, then it's a psychological, you know, uh, symptoms or he's using that as an excuse not to go outside. So, uh, because we're, we're like when we're here at the house, like you know, he he can be you know watching a movie, so he'll you know be sitting there for you know an hour and a half or so, like watching the movie, or when we're outside of like in our backyard playing or something. Um, and we just recently got them a pool, so like you know if he's in the pool, he's fine. But it's just like when we tell him like, oh, let's go and take a walk like in the neighborhood, and he you know starts to freak out. Or if we're gonna like drive somewhere, he always says, well, how long is it gonna take? Me? Who's gonna get down? Who's gonna you know, be there and things like that. So yeah, so it is important to deliver the message, um, a message uh, uh, appro uh, uh, developmentally appropriate. You know, sometimes children feel more anxious because they don't have accurate information. That doesn't mean we we have to. That doesn't mean we have to deliver accurate information. We need to explain to to them. Uh, age appropriate manners. So nine year old, we need to explain, you know, there uh, out there, there are biters and those biters can be killed by just washing your hands. I mean, that virus actually can be easily died with uh, soap, you know, if you washed hands and then our skin is proof, you know, they cannot pen penetrate from our skin, you know, they, the, those virus only comes from our uh, mouth and nose, so that's why we covering uh, uh, covering uh, you know, our, our faces with masks. So we deliver this mass uh, this uh, information to the child in age appropriate way, way, and also we want. Maria, as a mom, and uh, your your husband or other in the others in the house, uh, we need to explain to your son, you know, what we are doing at this in this house to pre prevent this virus. So, you know, because of this, this because the virus can break our skin. And they goes over here. That's why we wearing mask, and we don't want to bring the virus to home. That's why we wearing sometimes we wearing gloves, and that's you know. So we explain to that what as a family what we are doing to pre prevent this virus. So share again age appropriate manners. Share what you are doing as a family to. 
to protect your your son and your family from the virus. So okay. have a, a like a developmentally appropriate uh, uh, conversation with with your with your son, so he has a better understanding and um, uh, feel safe. I think that's important. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any others? Hi, I'm so sorry. I've been having a lot of con uh, issues with my connection, but I just wanted to reflect a bit about um, what you had suggested in our last meeting and what you, you know, reminded us earlier. I did what you had um, suggested, which was, you know, reflecting on my children's feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Which is something that we feel that we do, but then. Well, <laughs> I can't hear you. Yeah. We lost, maybe, maybe. We lost. I still see, Crystal, that you're there, but we we, we lost the audio. I was telling my oh. son um, a couple of nights ago that, um, that he's going to start summer school, and he was quite confused about, you know, why he was going to, to start summer, summer school with a different teacher. So, um, so, but I started noticing his body language trying, you know, starting to get sad, a little bit confused, a little bit um, hesitant to share his feelings. Mm -hmm. So I kind of rewinded and I let him know, you know, first I, I explained to him, I know that this is tough. You weren't able to finish the semester the way you, you were never, well, you weren't able to finish the year the way you're used to, which is, you know, saying goodbye to your teachers, your friends and so forth. And um, just to, you know, I just wanted to thank you because I really did take that opportunity to explain to him and, and um, I guess, you know, acknowledge his feelings mm -hmm. and made sure that he was heard and understood why he's feeling the way he is mm -hmm. and did my best effort to explain to him that, you know, that it is difficult and it is hard, but he's not the only one going through it, that they're all of his classmates and his teachers and everyone, this is something new to everyone. Mm -hmm. And he seemed to feel a bit better. Mm -hmm. Good, good. I'm so glad to hear that it worked. <laughs> yes, no, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for telling the stories. You know, from my experience as well, you know, little, take a little bit of time to reflect uh, their feeling and stay with that feeling. You know, sometimes we are not comfortable to focus on those negative feelings. Oh, my son is nervous. Oh, I need to fix that. You know, you, you're you getting upset. You're getting nervous as well. But just stay with that negative feelings with him and then uh, deliver that I'm here with you and then I feel that you are anxious and sometimes I am too, you know, so that that opens up uh, more conversation or more opportunity for the parents to share more information. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Anything else? I wanted, um, did someone have, I wanted to ask, um, because it reminded me of also two weeks ago, you were mentioning the spending the, the time alone with the um, with with the child, maybe like uh, fifteen, even as little as fifteen yeah. minutes, or once a week, yeah. and seeing the importance of uh, the connection of that and reflecting because you're they're getting that attention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The children they need to feel that attention that someone's paying attention to them. Yes. So I'm glad to hear that Krista has that little moment in daily life. But sometimes it's so, you know, sometimes we are so busy, you know. For example, we have this meeting and then your kids come and then I'm nervous, I'm confused, you know, we can't pay attention. So, you know, in child center, I mean, in child, in daily play therapy, we ask the parents to set a specific time of the week, just 30 minutes, or it depends, but typically 30 minutes, and uh, use that time fully for the child. So
so there are so many techniques that we ask the parents to uh, use during that special playtime. But I what I recommend to you is that use that time, you know, to fully pay attention to your child, like Crystal uh, did. You know, having some designated time. So yesterday I talked with my sister, and my sister also worked. Uh, I mean, she works in Korea, so she spent all day, and came home, and uh, um, her daughter, who is like less than two year old, you know, just to, you know, having a hard time, you know, melting down, you know very opinionated, doesn't behave well. So my sister took her daughter to outside and play just 30 minutes outside. And my sister said that she doesn't look her phone just fully engaged with the little child. So, I mean, it is not a structured at all, but, uh, but you know, my sister naturally spent these 30 minutes or just short of amount of time, fully pay attention to this little girl. So later, the girl feel better. Oh, my mom pay attention to me, and she has been out all day, and I need her attention, you know. And the mom saw the little girl's need and fully pay attention. So, you know that children want your attention. So. Spend a little of time, a little bit of time uh, with your child. And uh, it is very hard during the day or daily. So have, um, I recommend like once a week, maybe Sunday morning, because just because Sunday morning, if you don't go to church, that is the perfect time. I know I'm going to be there and I know I don't have nothing. So you wanted to make sure to be consistent again. So, oh, you know, like for example, so, so I'm gonna play with you uh, Sunday morning, you know, that that's the just time for you, you and me. So I have a question because sometimes you see parents that will use that as an incentive for the child to behave. Mm -hmm. So like maybe if the child misbehaves and say, okay, we're not gonna spend time together. What are your thoughts on that? No, that it's it's just a, um, it's a play therapy session or counseling session is not a reward. That's the typical reaction from you know someone who doesn't know counseling. You know, but like you know, no matter what, you know, if they behave well or misbehave, that special time is always will be there. And uh, that consistency, con structured, uh, help the child feel safe. I know Sunday morning she will play with me, and uh, that will be just that. But the time will be just me and her, and I know she will fully engage with me. So I I can be there right now. She is working uh, with the someone, you know. So that pre predictability helps them to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Anything? Uh, any other questions? You can, of course, unmute yourself. Uh, you can use the chat feature as well. Okay, so there don't seem to be any questions right now. I, I was also going to ask, you know, just these are some of the things that I think a lot of, you know, parents deal with, you know, that how important is it, you know, responding when a child is breaking those limits and you're trying to manage those limits that you've set? What's, how, how is, what's the best way to manage it when the child breaks a limit? Is it the same as just with, same things you've talked about, reflecting and, and setting the limit again and, and, and doing those uh, kind of things, tracking, reflecting, or do you, uh, what's the best way to react for a parent when the child is breaking the limits? 
so we we give them three opportunities so the again reflecting feeling setting the limits and give them alternative and also when you give the alternative you know for example you're really upset to me you're really mad at me you want to hit me but i'm not for hitting but you can hit this chair right so do it again do it again do it again and if you uh, uh, if, if they hit me then oh it looks like um it looks like you choose you choose to break you know uh, you choose to uh, uh, hit, hit me instead of this. That means you choose to terminate today's playtime or special time. So we learned that if you choose hit me, our playtime will, will be ended. If you choose to hit this, so we give them the, uh, the choices. So it's their decision. It's not a punishment. We we provided the options, and they choose. They choose the behaviors. And if, so, does someone have a question, a comment? Um, I wanted to just as follow up. What if it's not in the play session or the play time? It's just a normal day to day kind of stuff, the, the child is, you know, misbehaving or breaking some limits, right? Um, should, the, should the response be a little different? Or should it be, because how, how should, the, should it be the same? So it should be same. So like, um, let's say the child wanted to hit their little brother or sister because they were mad. And as a, if, you know, your sister is not for hitting, you know, uh, but you can hit this chair or stuff the animal. And so here's the option. You can still hit your sister, you can, but you, you can hit stuff the animal. Then you inform them, inform them, inform them. And he still hit his sister then, oh, I'm sorry, your playtime, you choose not to play with the, your sister or, or, or play video game with the, your sister. So you give them some consequences, consequences because of their, their decision. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not the parents give you, give them punishment, but it's their, they, they choose not to play video game with your sister. Um, it seems to me that this would be very, uh, pretty difficult for a lot of parents yeah. to react in that way. Um, do you find that, um, that when children, when they're having the, those issues, that they're, ha that they're gonna have less of those issues the more the attention that they get on a normal basis? So it's, it's, it's almost like you're doing prevention mm -hmm. by spending time with them, by reflecting Mm -hmm. and tracking and doing all those things that you talked about. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing those things on a normal, on a, is more on a normal basis, then you'll have less of those breaking the limits and acting out and doing things like that. Right. So uh, when you set the limit, uh, you need to remember what you wanted to set the limit. And then the basic uh, rules for the setting the limit is, is it hurting the child? Is it hurting others? Is it uh, breaking valuable property? So, you know, sometimes we are very, as an adult, we focus on controlling their behaviors. But when, when I talk about this, this setting the limit, it's, only talk about their safety, my safety, and other safety, and then some valuable property. So I think that'll be a little, a little different. And uh, you know, I understand parenting is hard, but I think it is more relationship. You know, uh, for example, like Crystal's uh, son or child. You know, uh, 
he worry about uh, he worry about new school or he is uh, uh, confused and how can I take at this moment to build a relationship with, with as a parent child better than oh don't worry you're you're uh, nervous uh, confusion that's that's what what we want no we wanted to more focus on the relationship i understand you and um it is okay to share your feeling with me and, and i am available for you so uh, i think focusing on the relationship is much more important than like i'm gonna control the behavior <laughs> behavior so it's important to do these things even if your child is behaving perfectly right i mean the child there is no child who behaved perfectly <laughs> but even if a lot of times people will think oh if i haven't having problems then i need to do this but this is something you should do all the time yeah all the time so that's why i i ask you, uh the parents to think about can i can i set the limit always can i be consistent I can, can I ask, what about for us as parents? What I've noticed as well, like we, I'm trying to do everything, right? As many of us are, you know, cooking and then it's not that easy. I mean, just this morning I'm thinking I spend like half the day in the kitchen because if I'm feeding my kids now, then I feel like I have that responsibility to make sure that they have a healthy, balanced out meal you know, limit their stuff, limit their cookies, their chips, and so forth, right? And then uh, my mom, who, who also lives with me, you know, she told me, wow, like, because my patients get a little slim some days, and she told me, like, it seems like you're having less and less patience at times with, them, with the boys. And I go, I, I, I didn't realize that, but maybe it is, because it's like spending 24 hours a day with my children, um, and I and I mean that literally because I mean we do have our moments from here to there, but then at night my boys are eight and six, and they still ask me even in their own bed, can you please come put me to bed, hold me till I fall asleep? Okay, you know what? Which I don't mind doing that because I've been doing that for a couple of years because normally I'm not as home, like I'm not home as often because I'm at school or at work. Um, but again, like sometimes I feel like, okay, am I doing this correctly? What is it that we can do to relieve like our stress and be in that healthy relationship with them? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to to uh, you know to be a good parent twenty four seven days, you know, and we are stressed. And I think just trying to be a good mom, I think that's good enough, you know. We, we we can't be the perfect super mom, you know. It's it's so hard. You work at home, and you, you know you little like you said you literally with them twenty four hours, and it is stressful. So I think it is important to uh, coping your own stress or what makes you feel better. I think that's important, you know. Um, I'm just gonna yeah say I think so self care we talked about like three weeks ago with uh, Mark Lust and some of the things just to reiterate you know when you have kids it's an extra stress and we're worried about you worry about the kids your, your kids and but you have to worry about yourself as well and it's is equal equally important to take care of yourself and it's just take care of your kids because if you're not taking care of yourself then it's harder to take care of your kids and it affects your kids. When you're when you have a lot of stress, they see that and, and, and they can they, yes. um, uh, they can they can react to that and and, um, and so I think and there's many different ways to do it, but I think um, just like Dr. Shin talks about taking a 30 minutes a week with your children, I think you should try to take 30 maybe 30 minutes a week or however long you can as as best you can, and we're all in different situations, you know, by yourself. Um, doing something for you for yourself maybe not necessarily by yourself but doing something for yourself and it's going to be different for everybody everyone has different things that 
that they that recharges them, all right, that relaxes them. Um, but you need to find that that time consistently once a week, just like spending time with your children, that needs to be consistent where you take care of yourself and do something for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I have a friend who is a mom and then she said, only place she can be alone is her car. So she just go and start her car and listening to music, you know, 30 minutes and coming back. That's the, that's the way she uh, handle her, her uh, strength. So, you know, everyone has a different way. You know, I go to gym and I see some moms comes, uh, come to the gym uh, in the morning, eight to nine. And I, I bet that will be their way to handle the stress. So you uh, know yourself the best. So uh, have some time for yourself. I think, it, uh, I mean, it seems like, oh, I, you might feel guilty, but in the long term, I think that will be help, helpful for your family and your children. And then, and then there's no perfect things, you know. Was some, one of my friends, she cooks all, you know, at, when uh, the, this quarantine start, she made all this wonderful dishes every time. Then she said, no, I'm not going to cook. So this is a long, long, you know, we don't know when it's going to end. So, you know, having a takeout uh, dishes, food, it's okay. And having a, a fast food, it's okay, you know. Uh, don't stress about, you know about um, healthy food or healthy learning. I mean, do the best you can, right? Yeah. Any other questions? I guess, sorry guys, it, you know, I'm gonna, just going off of that one, how do you feel about the schoolwork that we put upon them? Like, I feel like I sometimes kind of, not overdo it, but I don't want them to fall behind because we are in a whole different, you know, um, uh, atmosphere, I can say, right? Um, and I just don't want them to fall behind. So, you know, I've been continuing their schoolwork and negotiating some days here and there because they are going to start summer school next week. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so I, I don't know if I'm doing right or wrong from that or just literally just giving them a break. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it's, it's a talk to them you know so like, like for example when they are in the school you know having you know having structured daily routine you know you walk up eight o'clock and nine o'clock if the school starts nine o'clock you know have you know talk with them about the daily routine and then your expectation as well and then during the you know break you know maybe ask them some um what do you want to do during this break? You know, I know uh, maybe, you know, just one worksheet a day, you know, I think as a mom, you need to incorporate your expectation in when you discuss about it. And also listen, uh, you know, uh, provide the opportunity for them to share what they wanted to do, you know. So sometimes parents complain about like, oh, my child is playing video game all day. Then what else, what other activity did you provide to them other than a video game? Then sometimes, oh, I don't know. So I think it is also important to, you know, engage some constructive activity with them, you know, but, but sit with them and then talk about what, what would you like to do this summer? You know, nothing related to, you know, school work, you know, so maybe you want to, I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe we could buy a pool and then having pool outside, or uh, maybe plant a seed and you wanted to see the or um, ask them and then uh, incorporate it, what they want and uh, your expectation, but in terms of the schools and then talk to talk with them and then have a, some structure. Daily routine is very very important. Thank you so much. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, it looks like we have some people. Um, uh, we're down to five people and we're, we'll stay on um, for any other questions. Um, 
but if you have to leave, and we understand you have to leave. Um, so any other questions? Any other? Are we, Crystal, were you, did, did you have something? Did you have a question? Um, no, I mean, just thank you so much. I think, you know, I get, you know, I do, but <laughs> I, you know, I don't know how you guys feel because um, about talking about if we do go back to school, like the children, you know, those, those nerve sets, because I, I have been in quarantine with my uh, kids this whole time. I literally do not take them out because they have severe allergies and a really bad asthma. And of course, you know, with the coronavirus being out there, they're saying that a lot of the, I know that it doesn't affect children as bad and, it, and it's not something uh, that's been out there that, there that there's a lot of deaths or ill children, right? But at the same time, I am very nervous and I am very scared for the health of my children. So we're very cautious. But if we were to have to move into going back, moving forward, sending the children back to school, how would that talk look like, you know, even though right now they know that we're not going out and we're not having visitors or visiting anybody because of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know my children, even again, six and eight, they know that, oh no, we're not going over there because of the coronavirus. We're not doing this because of the coronavirus. But mm -hmm. if we do have to send them back, you know, what, what does a conversation like that look like or can look like, I don't know. Uh -huh. What do you think? Uh, that's the, uh, that's tough question, you know. Yeah. You know, I think if if school opens, and I think when they made that decision, I think all the top, you know, upper level decided it is really safe to go. And again, I like I shared with the other um, before earlier this uh, uh, today. You know, we can talk about. Uh, you can talk with uh, your children to talk about you know what we and the school teachers staff what we do to protect those buyers you know i think that that's that would be a good conversation and the age appropriate language right to, so you don't mm -hmm. try to make it something that is not too intimidating for them something easily for them to understand Definitely, I see that. Like my both my children have severe peanut allergy, mm -hmm. so you know we've always talked to, to talk to them about the consequences. Like Dr. Carola said, that we do do it age appropriate, but they know how severe it can be if they were to eat, you know, nuts. So mm -hmm. they they know the severity of it. But um, you know, we're just I don't know. I mean, this virus is something unknown to many of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just scares us, you know, and as a parent that, again, you know, with severe asthma and allergies and, you know, it's just something more to, you know, carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, be honest with them. I mean, again, AG appropriately, you know, uh, this virus is new, so we don't know much about it. But what what they know is that it's not serious or bad at to to the little little children you know so it'll be okay but sometimes you can the children can carry those virus and give it to others so that's why we worry about it and but if you wash your hands well you know uh, covering your face things like that and then i think that would be okay Thank you. Thank you guys so much. This is so helpful. And I look forward to these uh, Zoom meetings every Thursday. So I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank I'll you. Do, do my best. We'll do our best to have one next week. But we'll, we'll, you'll see the announcement hopefully on Monday. Of course. Thank you guys so much. And have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and stop the recording.